Fernando Ruiz Art. Hi everybody. Happy New Year. I know it's been a while. Uh, where this is of course 2020 now and uh, the last uh, couple of weeks have been uh, the holidays and I've been wrapping up um, a couple of projects. Uh, but now the, the new school year has begun, the new semester, uh, and uh, things have calmed down. So I, I'll, be, I'll be back to making videos and posting videos, so, so please keep tuning in. Um, while while we we're away, we have picked up some new subscribers. So uh, if, if you've uh, subscribed and you're, you're watching this, um, thanks, for, thanks for joining. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please uh, please consider doing so. And uh, don't forget to hit that little bell so that you're notified of uh, future videos. I try to post a couple a week. Um, and if you if you think of it, uh, please uh, click like at the end because that always uh, that always helps us out. All right. So what we're looking at here is uh, the amazing Spider Man. And this is my homage slash recreation of the cover to The Amazing Spider-Man number one. The original, of course, was done in 1962. Uh, I believe that's the great Steve Ditko who drew that cover. So I'm just, uh, I always love that cover. And of course, I love drawing Spidey. I also love drawing the thing, believe it or not. He's he's a lot more fun than you may think he is, um, and not as complicated as you may think he is too. He's 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 fun, and uh, the rest of the FF too. So I did this for fun. So this piece is is going into my portfolio. Uh, at the end of this month, I'll be at Garden State Winterfest, so uh, in in Hanover, New Jersey. Um, so. If anybody uh, wants to see this in person, uh, please stop by my table. I'll be in Artist Alley, and uh, I'm sure I'll have this uh, there. Okay. Next item of business, I have a Legion of Superheroes blank cover. This is the variant to issue number one of the new Legion of Superheroes series. And if you've been following me on Facebook or Instagram, you know I've been doing a Legionnaire a day. Um, so I thought, you know, maybe I could do something special on one of these covers. So if there's a character, a Legionnaire, you want to see me tackle on uh, on, on this cover, uh, give me ideas. I'm looking for ideas. Um, please, no invisible kid jokes. Uh, that's that's pretty obvious. Let's Let's do better, people. Okay. So uh, let me know in the comments below your ideas, your suggestions, your votes for Legionnaires. Now I've got scrap paper here. So what I want to do today is talk about uh, a different material. Um, and this is, this is a Crowquill pen nib holder. And these are speedball pen nibs. I'm going to I'm going to take one of these out. And this is a Hunt 102. And it'll say in the, uh, it'll have the 102 carved into the, into the pen itself. I don't know if we could see that. Um, so this is the nib. Okay. And this is the holder. Now, when you when you get one of these holders, um, it's important that you get the right one. If you look into the uh, the tip here, uh, it should just be open. It should be hollow. There's another type of holder that has like a ball fixed in there, and that is um, that's for a different type of nib. Make sure you have the open one. So now, my uh, actually let's take a close look at the nib here. You notice that the the nib itself is built on this cylinder. And if we look, we can see that the cylinder is open all the way through. See, we can see all the way through it, okay? And that's important, okay? Because not only does that cylinder just pop in and hold onto the cylinder and onto the pen nib like that, but um, 
it's also going to be useful in another way that I'm, I'm going to show you in a, in a minute. Um, now, people erroneously call these dip pens. And, and I guess you can dip with them, but I, I'm going to show you an alternative in a moment. Now, the way these pens work is, let, let me see if I could, if we could get in a little closer. You might not be able to pick this up, but when I press down, there is a, a, a split, an opening in the nib itself. And you can see this nib is a little dirty. It's been used. Um, but there is a, a split there. And when I press down, if I press down slightly, then the split opens up only a little bit. If I, if I press down harder, the more I press down, the more that split opens. And that's going to affect the thickness or thinness of the line that, I, um, that I'm going to make with this pen. Okay. Now, let me put the pen aside for a minute. And I have, uh, I have my, my black ink. And uh, I, I want to make sure that my black ink has a dropper. Okay, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be using that dropper to suck up ink with it. Okay, that's gonna be important. Uh, if you could say my dropper is a little damaged, it looks like my cat got to it and chewed up the end of it. Oh well, well that 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 could affect the suction of my dropper. Okay, now a lot of times people get frustrated with these pens because they insist on dipping them and they make a line and they've run out of ink and they need to dip again and, and they get into this pattern where they, they have to, um, they have to uh, dip every time they, they wanna make a line. And what's worse, when they have a bottle like this, they dip by sticking the pen all the way into the bottle. Now when you're working, and since the bottle is black, you're not gonna be seeing how far you're going in with that pen. And you want to keep the pen really as, as ink-free, believe it or not, as, as possible. So if you dip this all the way in and you start getting ink all the way into the base of the pen, um, that's going to be a lot of ink. That's going to be a lot of ink and, and your nib is going to get dirty um, and it's going to get harder to clean. So I always keep some, some uh, paper towels on handy to wipe up any accidents. Um, so you don't wanna dip your pen into a, a into your bottle like that. If you really need to dip it all, get yourself one of these eggshell palettes. They're really cheap. They sell them not only in, in art stores, but craft stores, Michaels, and they're about 99 cents. And, and what you could do is you could take your, your ink bottle, squeeze in, suck in some ink, and just, squirt some ink into one of these, any one of these eggshell uh, indentations. And then if you need to dip, you could dip your, your pen in that way. And at least this way you could see how far you're dipping your pen into your, into your uh, palette. So if we, I'm gonna pour some. And when you do this, keep in mind, a little ink goes a very long way. You don't need to pour you know, cupfuls, gallons of ink into this into this space. A little bit of ink like that is gonna go a very long way. So if you need to dip, you could dip like so. But I'm gonna show you an alternative in a moment. And you can see with the Crowquill pen, this is just scrap paper I've got. You can make lines and notice, oh, see, see when you're dipping, you're gonna run out of ink fast. And notice as I press down, I could press down and make a, oh, see, I'm out of ink again. I could press down, thick, 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 ease up and get thinner. Thick, oh, see, that's what happens. Well, let's, let's look at some alternatives here. So I, I pointed out to you that we have this cylinder here, okay? I'm pointing to it with my pencil. And this cylinder goes into the body of the pen nib. This cylinder is called your reservoir. This holds ink. I see a lot of my students um, do this 
the wrong way all the time. Um, uh, take advantage of that space because this is to hold more ink. When you're dipping, all you're doing is you're loading up this point with ink. So yeah, it's going to run out after a after a after a line or two. So what you want to do, you want to suck up some ink with your with your dropper, okay? Sucking up some ink there. Putting that aside. And you want to bring the dropper right into the reservoir. And right in there, and actually you want to do this over over your bottle because you want to squirt the ink in there and you're going to get a little excess there's some bubbling up there. That's okay. Let the excess run back into the bottle. Maybe pick up a little bit more. And then pour some in there. And I'm angling it down so that the excess ink will just go right back into the bottle. And this way you're loading up that nib with more ink than if you just dip the pen. Now, I what I would do after loading it up, I want to go to my scrap paper. Okay, which is what I'm working on. And I just want to shake off some excess ink. Because otherwise, sometimes you put the ink down and you get this glob that'll just form, that'll just pour out. And you can see now my, my nib is working better. Okay, you can see I'm making a lot more lines Again, with the nib, I could go thick to thin, thick to thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. So much of uh, inking is really practice. Um, I could show you some principles of inking in a, um, you know, in, in, in an afternoon, but really to get good at inking, it's just sitting down and practice and practice and practice. Uh, and just practice that line con control, that consist consistency. Notice when I'm um, when I'm making a line. You know, I, I don't know if you could see my whole hand movement, but I'm really I'm dragging my hand. I'm pulling my hand. I'm actually keeping my my hand and and wrist locked into one position. What I, what I don't want to do is these jerky movements of my hand back and forth because that's what gives me the scratchy little line. I want to do things in one stroke, one fast stroke. Now, eventually, yeah, you will, your, your nib will run dry. And then what you need to do is go in and squirt another reload in there, which I'm, I won't do right now. But that's uh, that's an important thing, and uh, a lot of us, a lot of people just don't know how to use these nibs uh, correctly. Um, and, and really, that's the main point of this video is use your use your reservoir, okay? Make sure you're pouring ink in there. And also, when you're done, make sure you keep that clean. It's very important to clean that out because if you don't, you know, after every use, what I do is I pop this out, I go in, I pop this out, and I make sure I wash in there. I want to make that as clear and as open as possible because ink will build up in there and eventually uh, your nib will clog and it doesn't matter how much ink you're squirting into that reservoir. It's so clogged, it, it, it'll only hold just so much. So make sure you keep it clean, wash it out. Go in there with a, with a Q-tip or even a, a rolled up paper towel point and make sure you get in there and, you, and you're able to clean that out. Okay. All right. That's, uh, you know, that's about it for this one. Uh, I, I'm going to do a part two to this video maybe tomorrow where I'm actually going to ink something uh, with the crow quill so you could really see this tool in action. So uh, please be on the lookout for that. I hope, uh, I hope this was uh, somewhat informative. Um, uh, please uh, let me know. Again, if you've got com uh, questions, comments, uh, put them in the comments section below. Um, and I, uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks a lot. And uh, above all else, keep drawing. All right, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.